Hey guys, it's Danny. Today it's time to test out another product from Repotme. And this is one I've been curious for quite a few years. Now these products were sent to me by Repotme.com. Some of you might already know we partnered uh, back in September and I've been trying out a lot of their products recently. None of these videos were sponsored, neither is this one. However, next year they did ask me to make some videos for them. Those will be sponsored because, well, surprise, they're hoping that next year they are hoping to be available in Europe and Canada as well through Amazon. So that is really great to hear. I know many of you have asked me about it and well I do hope that they succeed to be available in Amazon in these territories as soon as possible and to complement that uh, they did ask me to make some videos or actually video presentations for some of their products but that will happen next year. Today though we are trying the Oxycore pots that they do sell and I do believe they're the only distributor of these pots or they've created them. I'm not entirely sure, but I did not see them for sale any other place. And a couple of years ago, one of you guys mentioned them and I was always intrigued. And to be fully honest, at first I thought, well, what's the big deal? It's just a net pot in a normal pot. It's not something complicated. But as you might know, good ideas don't necessarily need to be complicated. So I want to give it a go. I want to see if we can actually find a setup in which they will shine. And to be fully honest, I think I do have such a setup in mind. But first, of course, let's go to the page on repotme.com, read a little bit about the product and see why it was created. Alrighty, so if you go on the page, you'll see they have different sizes. I do believe they sent me the 4 inch and the 8 inch inch sizes. I'm terrible at converting inch to centimeters on the spot, so I might be wrong there, but I highly doubt it. And they say that this is a two-part pot which creates a perfect environment for growing. Outer pot allows for dapple light to enter. The inner net pot is raised up for airflow and drainage. Many distinct openings on the bottom for water to escape and oxygen to enter create an environment which reduces potential root rot while increasing humidity. So pretty much the intent of these pots, as I understand it, is to create a very airy environment for orchids while still retaining humidity inside because if you've ever worked with net pots, and I personally have, you know that they tend to dry out really, really fast. Even in an environment which is not incredibly hot, such as mine, um, they will dry out pretty fast. This will depend, of course, on your humidity and your temperature. But in the end, I feel like I'm repeating it, it cannot compare to a pot, definitely, even if you use sphagnum moss. So the idea is to offer a sort of mask, I guess, but not really a decorative mask, something that will still let you see the roots, look inside, let light shine through, and also have drainage holes at the bottom. So you can see this is really not a self-watering, hydroponics, whatever type of setup. It is designed to stay dry, but be a little bit more moist than usual. And now that I read on their website even more, <laughs> pretty much that's what they're saying as well. And here's the interesting bit. Once the roots become well established and protrude through the inner net pot, we like to then remove the plant from the inner pot and then place it in the outer shell for longer term growth. Alrighty, so based on what I read here, this is not a permanent setup. This is supposed to help rootless orchids or recovering orchids by providing that extra humidity without actually impairing airflow. I think that's the gist of things. And well, to be fully honest with you, I do believe this can work and we shall test it out in such an instance. But is it the only way you can actually promote roots? I don't believe so. I would love to use this permanently somehow. And yes, I know this is a net pot and roots will get tangled in it. And yes, I know this is a clear pot, so light will penetrate and will create algae. I know and I see why this is not a permanent setup, but I think this will actually be helpful for some orchids which actually need these conditions. And here I'm talking about orchids which produce flower spikes downwards. And I do have such an orchid, even though she's recovering, so I guess we're gonna test two of the capabilities of these pots. I'm thinking about Stanhopias, about Draculas, for those of you who can actually grow Draculas, these net pots are often or actually pretty much used in most cases with Draculas because of their nature. I'm also thinking about Puffinias, which is an orchid that I owned at some point and I wanna get into it because she's not a cool grower, she's a worm grower, I just 
didn't really have the availability for her at the time that I purchased it. That orchid again creates flower spikes rather downwards. So we do need net pots, we do need baskets, problem with the Puffinia and Dracula and probably Stanhopia and other types of orchids which produce flower spikes this way is that they actually require high humidity. At least my Puffinia hated to dry out. And well the solution was to have a net pot, yes. But I don't want to really keep it hanging because in my older environment and in this new environment, keeping stuff hanging and having ventilation at the bottom means drying out. And even if I fill this pot with moss, even now in winter, I will still have a dry pot within three days or so. Therefore, I'm not entirely sure if I would keep a puffinia in something like this and water it every two days in summer, maybe every day, maybe every three days. However, if I want to extend the time in which the medium is wet, but at the same time I want to leave an open bottom and I want to see what's going on because especially with the puffinias, it was always a surprise when uh, flower spikes were created, so having an opaque outer shell, maybe not the best idea. I remember when my puffinia spiked, I found the spike in the pot very mangled. So being that I do want to see inside, Hey presto, I think this is a great setup for those orchids with a downwards flower spikes. If you don't really have a greenhouse or a way to hang your pots or you just don't want to keep them hanging, you want to promote humidity a little bit more in your environment. And you can also see what's going on because it's clear to see when an orchid will produce a flower spike in this. And when you see it, obviously, you can place it somewhere else, you can hang it, you can do whatever you want for the duration of the flowering and then when everything is said and done, put it back in its shell and there you go, we have high humidity once again. So this is how I envision a long-term setup. And there are disadvantages. You might say, yes, but what about the algae? Because we're gonna use moss. These orchids need a very fluffy medium to produce those flower spikes. Well, yes, but moss degrades really fast. So within a year, maybe a year and a half, you will need to change it anyway. At least with the Draculas, I've never grown Dracula, but this is just what I see with other people. Being that they do have sensitive roots, they do uh, usually change the medium every eight months even, or even once a year, depending on the moss, I guess, and depending on the person. So you will have to change the moss anyway with these types of orchids. And with the net pots, Draculas need to be constantly moist, as far as I know. Yeah, these pots apparently were created for orchids that are recovering and with the idea to provide more moisture until they're recovered and afterwards just pluck them out of the net pot, put them in the normal pot. So pretty much you get two pots. But I'm not that type of grower, I want more permanent setups. And especially when it comes to these uh, assemblies, which look pretty in my opinion. So today, um, enough rambling, we shall pot a Stanhopia that I recently purchased, which is not a very, very healthy orchid. With that said, let's just get to work and see if we can actually salvage this orchid. And yes, I know this is a very tiny orchid for what appears to be a very big pot, but I personally do not really care about pot size anymore if I can control humidity inside. And also this is a net pot. The roots will just uh, go through the net pot and that is that. So size, I don't see how it matters. Now, let's see if we actually do have some roots here. This appears to be sphagnum moss, so that's good. We will transfer this orchid into sphagnum moss again, so transition theoretically should be easy. That is if we actually have any available roots on this orchid, which so far I did not find any live ones, which is slightly concerning. The medium is a little bit damp, so I didn't need to moisten it prior to unpotting the circuit and I do see either a root starting, either a new growth. I think it's a root starting, which is great, that's what I want to see. Now this orchid doesn't look like it, but when it's mature it actually has pseudobulbs. <laughs> so this is how tiny it is. Oh and as you can see I actually have here two seedlings. This is not a growth or something, this is a second seedling which... oh. No, this one is dead. The stem is completely, completely rotten, very papery. Look at this. Yeah, no, so half of it, it's, um, it's gone, sadly. But this part actually looks good. And oh my word, this looks like a flask <laughs> seedling. Uh, I knew it was young, but the picture did not look like this. These roots are good though. 
Yes, we're good. So what we're dealing with here is a um, flask seedling. I will try to be very careful with it. There is no pseudobulb formed just yet. This is how young this orchid is. This means I'm gonna have quite a few years ahead of me <laughs> till I see this orchid flourish. But I think the journey will be very fun. And now I think you can see why I wanna give it a permanent setup. I don't wanna give it a transitional setup. Although you know me, sometimes I do that, but my transitional setups are like a one-time plastic cup, put some sphagnum moss on the bottom, put the orchid, that's it. I don't feel bad when that setup is done, but with something like this, I wanna make it permanent. It's pretty, it's nice. So this orchid had two dried sheets or leaves here. I just cut them, I didn't wanna rip them because I have a brand new root tip here that I don't wanna damage. So yeah, look at her. At this point, this orchid could be anything, not a stenopia. But yeah, what to do? I was not expecting it to be this way. The picture looked like a younger plant, yes, but not a seedling. So as I was saying, I will be using sphagnum moss. I will be using it in combination with some perlite. There we go. The sphagnum moss that I use is actually very, very good quality. It is the one from Best Grow. It is New Zealand sphagnum moss. It's not chili moss or other types of mosses. And I am so incredibly happy with it. It really doesn't seem like it degrades very fast. It is, however, prone to algae. There is no going around that. So I will just start to place some medium on the bottom of my pot and then try to arrange the orchid at this point. I'm gonna center it because I don't know where it wants to grow. Let's make a little room for it. There we have it. And then just go ahead and place sphagnum moss around it. And there we have it. I think I'm done. This is my orchid and well, considering that I do have a seed link, fertilizing will be minimal. I will not give it high amounts of fertilizer like my other plants. If you consider a uh, catacetum orchid or a vanda orchid and this little guy here, which doesn't even have too many structures, it's pretty logical that it doesn't really need the same quantity of fertilizer. So hopefully that will maintain algae at bay as well. I was considering putting a uh, top layer, but <laughs> I don't think the top will be my issue. I think the bottom will be my issue. Hopefully I will not have issues, but as I was saying, everybody who grows orchids in this type of setup doesn't really expect the setup to last years and years. At least a year, I want it to be okay. So here we have it. This orchid will not bloom anytime soon. So this wasn't necessary, but I did actually want to demonstrate the setup and I wanted to make this video earlier actually, but I was looking for an orchid, which was mature to try it with. And I just couldn't. Now it's winter. It's hard to safely transport orchids throughout Europe because it's already snowing. Temperatures are very low. So I thought, you know what? This is just a demonstration video and I hope you get the idea. So practically now if this orchid would be completely mature, I could actually see through this pot when a flower spike will start to develop and I can just hang it then and there. But for the rest of the time when this orchid is vegetatively growing and it actually needs moisture and water, um, you know, maybe it's a hassle to keep it hanging or even keeping it on a dish like so, but having all of these slits exposed to the air, again, having it dry out very, very fast. So of course not everybody will have issues with the net pots drying, um, just some of us will. But yeah, there we have it. I will keep you up to date. I'm happy that I saw that little root on the orchid. Uh, but now that I look at it, yeah, this was a flask baby. I cannot believe it. It's the second time that I'm dealing with uh, seedlings at this stage. And the first time it didn't go so well with the Vanda seedlings. So fingers crossed, I guess. So this has been it. I will see in the spring now what other orchids I can put in these pots. I do really, really want to get a Paphenia once again. I loved it. Uh, while I had it, I just didn't really have the availability for it. It is a worm grower, so why not? Um, in the springtime, I will actively look for it and she will 
absolutely go into one of these pots. I don't want to repeat history with my Puffinia. And there we have it. Hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll keep you up to date, of course. But if you're interested in it, you want to give it a go or you see some functionality in your setup, you have the links down below to repot me into this product. It's not an affiliate link, it's just a link. So with that said, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this and you know the drill. Like or dislike this video below, subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials, Q and A's and other fun orchid subjects. And if you like YouTube to notify you whenever I upload a new video, just turn on notifications for my channel. If you're also interested in my other setups and the light that I use and so on, I always list everything down below in the description. So do take a look at that. And with that said, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.